Okay, hey, welcome back. Um, you know, I was trying to solve four uh, problems into a 20 minute video. And the truth of the matter is, as hard as I tried to make it, um, I couldn't do it. So this is our final, this is our final titration problem that we have to deal with, okay? In the first part, just as a quick review, okay, in the first uh, problem that we had, we went ahead and looked at what was the original pH of our acid, our HCN. Doesn't dissolve particularly well in water, that's why we have the term weak, okay? And we went ahead and we worked our way through, because it's a weak acid, we went ahead and we did the ice table, okay? We did the Ka and we worked our way through and we got a pH of 5.1. That was it. For it. Okay, so, all right, it's definitely in the acid side of things. It's not, you know, if it gets on your skin, it would irritate your skin. Okay, I certainly wouldn't, you know, take that into my body. Then we looked at the second problem when we said, okay, we needed to add, we needed to add eight milliliters of base to the acid, and then what would be the pH then? Well, the situation is when we look at the concentrations here, we have to take into account, look, the base is going to cancel out some of the acid. What I'm doing, I'm giving you a big overview of where we have been, okay? So we're looking here, and this is our basic reaction that we're getting. Remember, uh, the sodium is a spectator ion, so we're not going to worry too much about it. The H2O, well, in any solution, because H2O by itself tends to be neutral, so we don't have to worry about it when we're working out uh, problems like this. But we know that adding the eight milliliters of NaOH is going to cancel out a number of the acids that you see there. Okay, now, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we figured out how much acid was going to be left over. Once we did that, then we went ahead and worked on the ice table, okay? And we did all those calculations, and it turned out we have a pH of 8.49. So definitely adding some NaOH did bump up the pH from about five something to about eight and a half. So, ooh, yeah, bit of a bump there. All right, so that means we're not having as many hydrogen ions as we did before. Then we went ahead and said, okay, how about when it's halfway through the titration, Okay, so we worked with that in our last thing. We talked about the idea that halfway through a titration, the moles of H plus is the same number of moles as OH minus. Okay, or should I see half the number of OH minus. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay, so we went ahead and we worked our way through. Now, why couldn't we use the M1 V1 equals M2 V2? Simply because, ladies and gentlemen, we are dealing with a weak acid and a strong base. If you look at a strong acid, strong base, we're not going to have to go through this so much. We're not going to have to do as much work because it's more straightforward. But when you're dealing with a weak acid that's not dissolving that well in water to begin with, we have to take this approach in order to make things work. Okay? So, we worked our way through that in our last video, and we worked our way, came out to a pH of about 9.21. All right, now, whew, we're almost there. We're almost at the end of it. So the titration of a weak acid with our strong base, okay, same conditions, 50 mils of one molar HCN titrated with 0.1 molar of NaOH. So we got an acid and a uh, base that are doing, we got our, we got our, uh, dissociation constant, okay? Our Ka, what is the pH when you are at the equivalence point of the titration? Well, the first question is, what do you mean when you're at the equivalence point? Is it the same as the end point? It could be the same as the end point, but not necessarily. And in this case, it's not. The equivalence point has to do with the number of hydrogen moles will equal the number of OH minus moles. 
that is when they're talking about the equivalence point. The end point has to do with when you're using the chemical known as the indicator that it changes to a certain color that says, okay, here's your end point. For example, the universal indicator will turn green um, at the pH of 7, which is kind of cool, but, excuse me, I dropped the paper here, but the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, that would be great for a strong acid, strong base combination. But if we're working with a weak acid, strong base, or weak base, strong acid, that doesn't work out that way. Okay? So that's our equivalence point of the titration. So this is where we're at the equal. Where we did the halfway, we looked at number of hydrogen moles equals half the number of OH moles. So what we need to do, okay? We looked at it, and let me see here. All right, so first thing that we need to do is look at our major species. Who are the major players in all of this? Now, I didn't mention that much about it in class, but we do need to here. And what are our major species? Well, we have our CN minus. Okay, we have our Na+, plus, which, while it's a major species, because it's there, it's also a spectator ion, and we have good old H2O. And again, if you, if you don't quite understand the major species, again, feel free to look it up uh, in your book or on the internet. Okay, so when we're looking at the, the equation, when we look at the equation, we have to look at Cn minus plus H2O. Okay, gets us HCN plus OH. So we've got some more OHs running loose out there. This is what we have. Okay, and since we are saying that we have 0 0.005 moles of H, we need to get 0 0.005 moles of OH. So when we look at something like this, uh, for 0.1 molar, of NaOH, we would need 50 milliliters of NaOH added to get the equivalent of the number of hydrogen moles that are out there. Okay, so let's go with this. If we look here, we need to do the ice table now. We need to do the ice table. So we're gonna go with our initial, our change, and our equivalence, our equilibrium, I'm sorry. So, okay, well, what do we know? There's some initial, we have CN plus H2O. Now, the H2O isn't going to play a role, okay, in this whole thing, <coughs> excuse me, but we start out with zero amounts of HCN and the OH. We start out with zero amounts. Here, though, we're going to have 0 0.005 moles over 0 0.1 liter, okay? You'd say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you getting this, okay? In the problem, remember, we're adding about 50. In order to get the equal number of moles of this to go equal number of moles of this, okay? We had to go ahead, we had to go ahead and work with it. We had to figure out how many moles of NaOH are added. Okay, so it's about 50 milliliters of NaOH. So for us, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking here, and this is how many moles over 0.1 liter that we have. We have a change. In this case here, this is going to lose, isn't it? It's going to lose because it's breaking up, it's going to change, and this is going to gain. Okay, this is going to gain. So what is that going to mean for us? Well, what's gonna happen at the equilibrium? Well, at this point, if we go 0 0.005 divided by 0.1, that means it's gonna be 0 0.05 minus x. We have a plus x here and a plus x here as we are working on our ice tables, okay? now. At this point, though, we're not working with H+, plus, are we? We're not. What are we working with here? The OH-. minus. So are we going to be looking for the Ka? Now, we have the Ka, but 
Is it gonna be useful to us right now? No, nope. we've got to figure out what the KB is going to be. Because the KB is going to, we can figure out the concentration of the OH minus, figure out the POH, and then subtract from 14 to get the pH. Now the book does it another way, okay? This way also works, okay? So I went this route. So we need to find KB. Well, how do we go and find KB? Well, KB is equal to KW over KA. Now we happen to know what KW is, that is, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th over uh, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10th. Now, the 1 times 10 to the minus 14th is common knowledge, okay? And the 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10th is the Ka that they gave us at the beginning of the problem right here. Excuse me. Okay, so we found that our KB, our KB is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, what is that going to do for us? Watch this. Because we know that KB is equal to the concentration of our products over the concentration of our reactants, just like Ka, right? Nothing you haven't seen before. That's our equilibrium, okay? That's basic, like a standard formula for all of us in chemistry. We've been working with it. So that would mean that our Kb is going to equal HCn multiplied by OH minus over, in this case, Cn minus. So that's what it would look like for our equation because look at our reaction up here. Okay? Cn minus plus H2O gets us HCn plus OH. Remember, we've got an equilibrium that's being established here. So with that, now we can go ahead and we can plug in numbers. Now we can assume, we can assume here, guys, that x is really, 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 really small. Okay? And that just makes the job so much easier. So if you think about it, kb is equal to x squared over 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So that's what we have, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we're interested in the OH concentration, okay? Now, we said that the KB was 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth, so 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth is equal to x squared over 0 0.05. Oops, pop, gosh. All right, let's get this out, 0.05. Okay, so you can multiply both sides by 0 0.05 and then you can take the square root of it and we're going to skip that part because our concentration, our concentration of OH is equal to 8.9 times 10 to the minus fourth, okay, molar, concentration of OH. Is this the answer? Can we plug this in and get our pH? No, you can't. You can't because that is our OH concentration, not our H concentration. Say, oh my gosh, there's more work. No, it's not that bad. Here, look at it this way. You know that pOH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of OH minus, right? So we can plug this number in here so that our pOH is equal to the negative log of 8.9 times 10 to the minus fourth. And what is that going to get us, ladies and gentlemen? Well, it's going to get us a pOH of 
3.05. Ooh, that's a, that's a lot of OH running loose out there. Mm. So now the question is, well, wait a minute, what's the pH? Because that's the whole point of the problem. Well, remember, pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So we can turn around and take P14 minus the pOH will give us our pH. Okay? As we're running through, let's finish this off here. Okay? So 14 minus 3.05. Five is going to give us 10.95. So our pH, ladies and gentlemen, is equal to 10.95. Okay, that's definitely more of a basic solution than we started with. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, and you'd say, but wait a second. You add, this is the equivalence point. Wait a minute, if they're the same number of moles, wouldn't we have a pH of seven? But remember, strong acid, strong base, that works pretty nice and clean, but remember, weak acids and weak bases don't dissolve that well in water. You know, if we're lucky, maybe 5%, but not always, okay? Usually it's definitely less, so there's less to work with. So what happens is that equivalence point actually changes, it actually changes on our, on our thing here. So let me see if I can find my, if we look at the titration curve, so strong acid with strong base, the equivalence is at the pH of seven. Great, this is what we would expect for a strong acid and a strong base. Okay, wonderful, yay. Now, what happens when you have a strong acid with a strong base? Well, okay, so try that again. Weak acid with a strong base. Oh, wait. That's the problem that we were working with. But, 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 but the equivalence point is higher up. So the pH is greater than 7, which we went ahead, guys. Remember, we went ahead, worked through this out to our 10.95 which matches that the equivalence of the pH is going to be greater than 7 when you have a weak acid and a strong base. Now, if you have a strong base with a strong acid, you have an equivalence at pH of 7. Wait, didn't you just do that? Well, yeah, we said strong base with strong acid. Okay, we did do that. But what happens when you have a weak base with a strong acid? Then you have the equivalence at the pH of less than 7 which would make sense because it is the opposite, okay? Remember, you, if you look at it, the pH is going to be less than 7 because the strong acid dominates, okay? Look at it that way. All right, well, this is it. So I had to make it in two parts. Um, hey, I didn't even pick up a name. I didn't even make up some uh, silly little things. There is an introduction to the video. Uh, guys, I'm really hoping that this will help you out. Okay? I will catch you on the flip side.